friends, welcome back to my channel, welcome back to another video. Today I want to do the final review of Little Birdie Crafts products that I was sent by them. It was a little while ago so I've had plenty of time to kind of play around with all of the products and get a feel for them and make my mind up in terms of what I think about their product. So again, just a little disclaimer before we get started. Of course, if you watched my whole video then you may already know, I was sent all of these products by Little Birdie Craft for free for me to try using their product in my project and review them. So of course there's going to be a little bit of a bias from my side, I don't think that can be excluded, however I'm going to try and stay as unbiased and honest as I possibly can. I have a couple of criticisms or areas of improvement that I wanted to mention and I really hope that Little Birdie Crafts will take those on board because I really like the company, I really like working with them and I would like to keep working with their product in the future. So I'm going to try and go in the order that I unpack them. So I've written my note here so that I don't forget certain things that I wanted to mention. So let's get into it. So I got two packs of paper flowers, these lovely blue ones and white ones and I already used them in a project. If you have seen my decoupage pan video, you would have seen me use them in there. If not, check the card or the link in the description for that. I really, really like them. I really liked using them and I will definitely be using more of them. I really enjoyed adding them to my project. I think that they kind of add that little bit of extra, a little bit of prettiness into the project and it kind of was my first time using paper flowers. I've used silk flowers in a project before but paper flowers this was my first experience with them so kind of from a newbie's perspective I thought that they were really well made really firm so when I think about paper flowers I kind of imagine you know something that's made out of um office paper <laughs> and in fact no they had like a really really nice texture they were really well made and I really like the look of them all of the paper flowers have little stems they are made more for mixed media and scrapbooking um, so that you can stick them in th into things but I found that the stems were really easy to cut off just with scissors so uh, so that I was able to glue them onto the project rather than stick them into something and in general I would definitely recommend those So next let's talk about stencils. I really liked all of the stencils that I got and I have already used all of them in project and I think that they are really good quality. They have really really beautiful designs and the only thing that I can say is that I would like for Little Birdie Crafts to keep making them and make more beautiful designs so that I can keep using them in projects. <laughs> So next up let's talk about metallic paints, so I've got this gold and green metallic paints and they seem to have a really good pigmentation, really good coverage and I think they're gonna last a very very long time because a little bit does go a long way so they are quite easy to spread. Um, I really like the containers that they come into, so, so these kind of little jars with white screw on tops are in my opinion the best containers that you can have for paints, they make using them a lot easier. Next up let's talk about the acrylic chalk paint. So in terms of how the paint feels when you apply it and the result that it gives you, it is literally an acrylic chalk paint. So when you apply it, it feels like an acrylic paint. It's very flowy, it's very stretchy, a little bit goes a very long way, but when it dries it becomes very chalky and very matte. Because it is a chalk acrylic paint and it's very flowy, it's very easy to get an even no brush strokes application with that paint. Now a few points that I wanted to hit on that could be improved. I think that the bottles aren't the easiest to use, so the actual shape of the bottle, so the actual bottle itself, so as you can see it is like a bottle with a screw on top, um, it's not the easiest to use. If you're using a larger brush you can't dip it into it and if you're using a small brush when you dip it in it's quite hard to see because the neck of the bottle is quite small, quite hard to see where you're going, how much you're getting. So the easiest way to, to get the paint out, have to pour the paint out onto a plate or a palette or something like that and then pick it up with a brush from, the, from your palette. And because this paint goes a very long way, I find myself wasting a lot of paint because when you go to pour it, it's really difficult to control how much you get out. And even if you're trying to just get a little bit out, 
I always find myself kind of pouring more out than what I think because it seems like you only have a little bit but then you start working with it and then and you find that oh gosh you know I'm not gonna need that much paint because it goes a long way so I think that if this paint came in the same containers as metallic paint it would be a lot easier to use it because then you can just use a palette knife or a brush to get however much paint you need or even just dip the brush directly into the paint if you need to. The other point that I wanted to hit on is that the paint isn't as pigmented as I would like so some of them are really good like the blue paints have really good pigmentation but then the burgundy and the wasabi green I think aren't as pigmented so I found that I had to apply way more coats of some paints than I did the other ones so the blue one I'm okay with just one or two coats of paint and then the burgundy it's three four coats of paint and then you can still end up with a few parts that are a bit blotchy and need going over again so that is something that could be worked on they do sell them in these little boxes in packs of six so they come in like these collections um, organized by like uh, bright shades or country shades and I would personally like to see a box filled with um, kind of the primary shades so that you have your black white green red blue and yellow um, in in one pack so that you can then mix the paints that you need to because even though I got two packs so I got bright shades and I got the country um, country shades they didn't come with a dark brown or a black so whenever I was mixing paints if I wanted to darken the paint up then I had to use my other acrylic paint and mix them in together. It would be nice to have an option to either buy black and white separately or just to have a collection, um, a little box filled with the primary shades. Next let's talk about decoupage glue. So they sent me um, matte and gloss and I found that the matte glue actually dries to a very very lovely matte finish which um, I really enjoyed compared to like my default decoupage glue to use is matte Mod Podge. Little Birdie Craft matte decoupage glue dried to a much nicer matte finish. A glossy one however if you wanted to just use decoupage glue and no varnish to get a glossy finish then you would need to apply two or three coats to get a nice glossy finish. In terms of consistency this glue is much thinner than Mod Podge. It kind of reminds me thinned out Mod Podge, which if you do napkin decoupage and you've tried Mod Podge, you already probably know that you need to thin Mod Podge out with water to get a good consistency so that you don't rip your napkins. So by consistency, it reminds me watered down Mod Podge. So it is perfect for napkin decoupage and rice papers because it kind of seeps through. It also worked really well with their own decoupage papers and um, my other scrapbooking paper that are specifically made for crafts. However, I did find that my own laser printout, so any pictures that I want to print out myself, I can't really use that glue um, to go over the top of the picture because it kind of curdles away from the pictures. So again, if you've seen my uh, decoupage bowl video then you would have probably noticed when I was gluing down pictures I used that glue and you probably would have noticed that the glue was kind of curdling away from the pictures it still glued it down really well it is a very strong glue so it still glued it on but I did find that glossier surfaces like laser printouts um, it just kind of slides away from it. I haven't noticed any yellowing and to be perfectly honest I'm not expecting any yellowing to appear because most decoupage glues that are made specifically for decoupage um, are made to be non-yellowing so but in terms of that you know only time will tell really. Now let's talk about decor varnish. So I got a uh, gloss decor varnish and again so um, the point that I wanted to hit on is that the the bottle that it comes in, it's not a very good fit for varnish in my opinion because it is kind of a squeezy bottle so you have to squeeze it either onto a plate or directly onto your project and it's quite hard to judge how much you're going to need to take out to apply so, um, so I found myself squeezing out way more than I needed a couple of times so again um, if you use it enough of course you will get used to it and you will learn how to use how to get the right amount but I do think that if it came in in a wider screw top uh, bottle like metallic paints 
it would be a lot easier to use it and there would be a lot less waste. The good things that I really like about this varnish is that it cures quite fast and what I mean by cures, not when it's touch dry but when it's um, when you touch it and it feels really really hard so when you can when you can scratch your nail over it and you know that it's not gonna come away from it so my usual gloss varnish that I normally use is a Wilco's gloss varnish it can take about two three weeks for Wilco's gloss varnish to get to that kind of stage where I can run my nail over it and I'm confident that it's not gonna that I'm not going to scrape away any kind, any varnish off of it. Until that point, it still feels a bit soft, so it's it's dry, it's touch dry, but it still feels a bit flimsy. Little Birdie varnish cured to that kind of stage in about a day or two, so that was very good. In terms of heat resistancy, this coaster, again, I made for a video, I have tried using it as an actual coaster, so putting really hot drinks on it, and they don't really stick. I did notice after I left my cup on for a very long time, there is a little line that appeared there that you can see. Um, it's not like it's not like cracked or anything, but it's um, it's gone a little bit matte there on that line. I don't think this varnish is specifically made to be used for coasters. If you're planning to make coasters, I would still recommend finding something that is specifically uh, heavy duty, heat resistant, something that is specifically made for that. However, if you only need it for one or two projects, then you can definitely still use this varnish. It is it is definitely really good. Now let's talk about crackle medium. One of my favorite discoveries, so this was my first one-step crackle medium that I've used, so I can't really compare it to other products that I've used before. However, I can say that I've used it um, about three, four times now, and it's worked every single time. It is really easy to use, and I got really nice cracks every single time. So I also really like the fact that once you apply the paint, it literally starts cracking two seconds after the paint has hit the surface so you can see that magical effect of cracks appearing so it's really nice and if you're in the market for a one-step crackle medium then I would definitely recommend it. Next let's talk about wax so I got the green one um, it's called Glimmer Moss I believe it has really really good pigmentation I really like that I can compare it to other products that I've used and and I find that compared to Finnebar or Pentart waxes that I've used before, I find that Little Birdie Crafts wax is a lot harder in consistency, so when you go over it with your finger, you don't end up picking up too much, you literally just get the, it's almost like you just get the pigment and not the wax itself, and so when you go to use it, you don't end up with like too much wax excess getting into all of the creases and crevices which is something that I've experienced with both Finnebar and Pentad waxes. Once again a little bit goes a very long way so if you end up getting one of the waxes you're really gonna get a lot of life out of it. So again I would definitely recommend it. Next let's talk about heavy gel medium. Again, one of those things that I don't really have much to compare it to. But I really enjoyed using it for a race stencil effect. It held the peak really, really nicely. And um, and in the project that I used it in, I ended up painting over it. The paint went over it really, really nicely. However, it's so beautiful. It has such a beautiful iridescent consistency to it that you could definitely just use it over the paint and not paint over it. And, it, and you would get a really, really nice look. Of course, there are many other uses for gel medium. You can mix acrylic paints into it and use it to add texture using palette knives and brushes and whatever you want to. So I'm looking forward to using it more. Next, let's talk about transfer gel. So this is probably the one that I have the most criticism uh, for. I've tried using it three times now. And the first time that I used it, was again on that coaster that I showed you before and I actually got a really really nice result. I only had um, a tiny little bit of pigment that I didn't transfer through but with the picture that I was using it still looked really nice and so that wasn't a problem. Now the other two times that I tried using it I tried applying heat, I tried leaving it for an hour and a half and every time that I use it I end up taking off a lot of pigment. I ended up with big holes and, and a lot of 
white paper left over so I wanted to show you this box uh, so I tried transferring a picture over this uh, more complex backgrounds and so as you can see the white paper is literally glued on there and it won't come away and if I keep going over it and taking it away all of the actual picture is coming away with it as well so unfortunately it's really difficult to get a consistent result I'm gonna keep trying it out and see if I'm able to actually work out how to use it properly and how to get the consistent results how to get the best result if i do find the way to use it i'm definitely going to make a specific video tutorial or maybe do a live stream showing how to use it in the correct way to get a good result but unfortunately i found that it doesn't really give me the result that i am after now just to be the devil's advocate here for a second um in my experience from what i've heard from other people, other crafters that have had other experiences with um, many different brands of transfer gels and so on. It seems like it is a very common theme with transfer gels that it's quite difficult to get a consistent result. It, it can be quite difficult to get a good result where the whole picture transfers and you don't end up with holes in it. So what it sounds to me like that most transfer gels out there on the market um, are likely to give you an inconsistent result. Um, so for the time being I'm still gonna say that my varnish uh, transfer method seems to be working better but again like I said if I do find a way to use it properly then I will let you know. And next let's talk about gesso which is definitely one of my favorite finds out of this haul. I really like both the white and the black gesso and they are definitely becoming one of my all-time favorite mediums to use. <laughs> the reason why I like it so much is that when I decorated my book, which if you haven't seen that video, again, it's going to be linked in the description. When I decorated the book, I primed it with white gesso and then painted it with black gesso and in the parts where the spine of the book and the cover of the book meet and there's like the little bendy part I don't know what you call it but that little bendy part it doesn't crack it's amazing it's mind-blowing to me every time that I've tried to decorate a book before this I always get cracks in that bendy bit whatever paint that I use whatever primer I use I always get cracks and this time it didn't and it was just mind-blowing to me and it was amazing and now I'm probably gonna decorate way more notebooks than I have done in the past because I have the tool that I need and to be able to make a good quality product that doesn't crack so yeah I'm just really really impressed in terms of pigmentation I found that black gesso has a very very good pigmentation you can get away with just one coat of it however white gesso is quite translucent so if you wanted to just use that to cover whatever is underneath, you, you will probably end up needing 2-3 um, coats of the white acrylic gesso. Now let's move on to sparkle paste. Again, don't really have anything um, to compare it to other than heavy gel medium maybe and my and structure paste. I really enjoyed using it through a stencil. Again, if you've seen my video where I decorated this candle here, you would have already seen me use it through the stencil and I also used it with a brush just to add a bit of glitter over the top of everything and it worked really really well. It's definitely one of my favourite discoveries and I'm looking forward to using it more. Now moving on to the little MDF plaque. Again, good quality. I don't really have much to say. I like the fact that it was a five or six millimeter one, so it's nice and thick. It can actually be used as a decorative plaque and made into something that is gonna last and be good quality. And now the last product that we're gonna talk about is the decoupage paper. Again, definitely one of my favorites. I really liked all of the designs. All of the papers are really good quality. They are very, very high resolution, so there's no like pixelation on them, um, like you like you get on napkins and, and some rice papers as well. So the decoupage papers, I'm really, really happy with those. I like the fact that the paper is really thin. I'm not sure how heavy it is by weight, but it feels like office paper or even thinner than that. Uh, so it's really easy to use. I really like the fact that there is a good selection of full A4 page designs and also 
I a4 page filled with smaller designs so there is a good selection of sizes for whatever project you're making and you also get four papers per pack so you get two designs and two pages of each in a pack of papers and I think that is really good value for money. So there we go guys this is the review I hope that you enjoyed it I hope that this was helpful for those of you that wanted to know more about their products or that weren't sure about some of the products I really try to stay as unbiased as I can of course like I said in the beginning uh, all of these products were sent to me for free and also I am in their affiliate program but I really do believe that um, most of the products that I use are definitely really good quality and worth buying if you're in the market for something like that and again I really hope that this was helpful for the company itself as well I hope that the feedback that I've provided will be um, will be helpful in developing the products further I am really grateful for the opportunity that was given to me to um, to actually try these products out and be able to tell you about them. But yeah, thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you would like to see more videos like this or more tutorials like you can find on my channel. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!